the Holy Spirit. When He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. John 16, 13, 8. The preaching of the Word is of no avail without the presence and aid of the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit is the only effectual teacher of divine truth. Only when the truth is accompanied to the heart by the Spirit will it quicken the conscience or transform the life. A minister may be able to present the letter of the Word of God. He may be familiar with all its commands and promises, but his sowing of the gospel seed will not be successful unless this seed is quickened into life by the dew of heaven. Without the cooperation of the Spirit of God, no amount of education, no advantages, however great, can make one a channel of light. Before one book of the New Testament had been written, before one gospel sermon had been preached after Christ's ascension, the Holy Spirit came upon the praying disciples. Then the testimonies of their enemies was, Ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Acts 5.28 Subheading, God's Promises Subject to Conditions Christ promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to his church, and the promise belongs as much to us as to the first disciples. But like every other promise, it is given on conditions. There are many who profess to believe and claim the Lord's promises. They talk about Christ and the Holy Spirit, yet they receive no benefit because they do not surrender their souls to the guidance and control of divine agencies. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to use us. Through the Spirit, God works in His people to will and to do of His good pleasure. Philippians 2.13 But many will not submit to be led. They want to manage themselves. This is why they do not receive the heavenly gift. Only to those who wait humbly upon God, who watch for His guidance and grace as the Spirit given. This promised blessing, claimed by faith, brings all of the blessings in its train. It is given according to the riches of the graces of Christ, and he is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. The impartation of the Spirit is the impartation of the life of Christ. Those only who are thus taught of God, those only who possess the inward working of the Spirit, in whose life the Christ life is manifested, can stand as true representatives of the Savior. Subheading, The Holy Spirit as an Educator. God takes men as they are and educates them for his service if they will yield themselves to him. The Spirit of God received into the soul quickens all its faculties. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the mind that is devoted unreservedly to God develops harmoniously and is strengthened to comprehend and fulfill the requirements of God. The weak, vacillating character becomes changed to one of strength and steadfastness. Continual devotion establishes so close a relation between Jesus and his disciples that the Christian becomes like his master in character. He has clearer, broader views. His discernment is more penetrative, his judgment better balanced. So quickened is he by the life-giving power of the Son of Righteousness that he is enabled to bear much fruit to the glory of God. Christ promised that the Holy Spirit should abide with those who wrestle for victory over sin to demonstrate the power of divine might by endowing the human agent with supernatural strength and instructing the ignorant in the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Of what avail would it be to us that the only begotten Son of God humbled himself, endured the temptations of the wily foe, and died, the just for the unjust, if the Spirit had not been given as a constant, working, regenerating agent to make effectual in each individual case what has been wrought out by the world's Redeemer? The Holy Spirit enabled the disciples to exalt the Lord alone and guided the pens of these sacred historians that the record of the works and words of Christ might be given to the world. Today, this Spirit is constantly at work, seeking to draw the attention of men to the great sacrifice made upon the cross of Calvary, to unfold to the world the love of God to man, and to open to the convicted soul the promises of the Scriptures. It is the Spirit that causes to shine into darkened minds the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness, that makes men's hearts burn within them with an awakened realization of the truths of eternity, 
that presents before the mind the great standard of righteousness and convinces of sin, that inspires faith in Him who alone can save from sin, that works to transform character by withdrawing the affections of men from those things which are temporal and perishable, and fixing them upon the eternal inheritance. The Spirit recreates, refines, and sanctifies human beings, fitting them to become members of the royal family, children of the heavenly King. Subheading, Effect of Receiving the Spirit When one is fully emptied of self, when every false god is cast out of the soul, the vacuum is filled by the inflowing of the Spirit of Christ. Such a one has the faith that purifies the soul from defilement. He is conformed to the Spirit, and he minds the things of the Spirit. He has no confidence in self. Christ is all and in all. He receives with meekness the truth that is constantly being unfolded and gives the Lord all the glory, saying, God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 10, 12. The Spirit that reveals also works in him the fruits of righteousness. Christ is in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4:14. 4, he is a branch of the true vine and bears rich clusters of fruit to the glory of God. What is the character of the fruit born? The fruit of the Spirit is love, not hatred, joy, not discontent and mourning, peace, not irritation, anxiety, and manufactured trials. It is long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Those who have the Spirit are earnest workers together with God. The heavenly intelligence cooperate with them, and they go weighted with the Spirit of the message that they bear. They speak words of solid sense, and from the treasure of the heart bring forth pure, sacred things after the example of Christ. The message that we have to bear is not one that we need cringe to declare. Its advocates are not to seek to cover it, to conceal its origin and purpose. As those who have made solemn vows to God and who have been commissioned as the messengers of Christ, as stewards of the mysteries of grace, we are under obligation to declare faithfully the whole counsel of God. We are not to make less prominent the special truths that have separated us from the world and made us what we are, for they are fraught with eternal interest. God has given us light in regard to the things that are now taking place, and with pen and voice we are to proclaim the truth to the world. But it is the life of Christ in the soul. It is the active principle of love imparted by the Holy Spirit that alone will make our words fruitful. The love of Christ is the force and power of every message for God that ever fell from human lips. Subheading, Nearing the End Day after day is passing into eternity, bringing us nearer to the close of probation. As never before, we must pray for the Holy Spirit to be more abundantly bestowed upon us, and we must look for its sanctifying influence to come upon the workers, that those for whom they labor may know that they have been with Jesus and have learned of him. We need spiritual eyesight that we may see the designs of the enemy and as faithful watchmen proclaim the danger. We need power from above that we may understand, as far as the human mind can, the great themes of Christianity and their far-reaching principles. Those who are under the influence of the Spirit of God will not be fanatical, but calm and steadfast, free from extravagance in thought, word, or deed. Amid the confusion of delusive doctrines, the Spirit of God will be a guide and a shield to those who have not resisted the evidences of truth, silencing every other voice but that which comes from Him who is the truth. We are living in the last days when error of a most deceptive character is accepted and believed, while truth is discarded. The Lord will hold both ministers and people responsible for the light shining upon them. He calls upon us to work diligently in gathering up the jewels of truth and placing them in the framework of the gospel. In all their divine beauty, they are to shine forth in the moral darkness of the world. 
This cannot be accomplished without the aid of the Holy Spirit. But with this aid, we can do all things. When we are endowed with the Spirit, we take hold by faith of infinite power. There is nothing lost of that which comes from God. The Savior of the world sends his messages to the soul that the darkness of error may be dispelled. The work of the Spirit is immeasurably great. It is from this source that power and efficiency come to the work of for God.